Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that I just started to play with this IBM PS2 model 77 on which I was trying to install OS2. This is to take advantage of this very special micro-channel card that should allow me to connect my mainframe peripherals to it, such as my giant IBM tape drives or this humongous mainframe printer. But just as we finally succeeded to write a very special boot diskette, it died on us. No post, no beep, no nothing. It doesn't even check the memory, so it doesn't even get there. It doesn't even get a beep from the, the motherboard, yeah. right? Uh, which I suppose the IBM things do. If the processor is not executing. Uh... All right. Uh, okay, well, let's try to give it a shot, see if we can revive it. <laughs> And Carl has good reason to be dubious. This is all undocumented using IBM proprietary architecture and ASEX. Actually, that was the point of this, to make a PC that was not documented and could not be reproduced, change the bus architecture to make it proprietary, a move that would sure give the PC market back to IBM. Yeah, right, that will work. I'm really not sure what marketing people smoke in these big companies. So back to our very dead and very proprietary PS2. It does not even make it to the beeping part of the post, if it even attempts to post at all. So we are really constrained to the basics. Stripping it out of its memory and cards, checking the supplies and the processor would be the first steps. I, I would say to check if uh, power good. Is coming out of the mm -hmm. supply would be probably my, my first hint. Pity there's no lights or anything to show you that it's moving through post. It uh, could, could just be that the 5 volts has disappeared or something like that because mm -hmm. the, the disk works at probably as of, of 12. Mm -hmm. So mine I think is a Bermuda board. There's Bermuda and Laguna boards. You can start comparing to the pictures. Yeah, I have the bird. It's the, it's the one with the scuzzy, so I think that's Bermuda. It uh, is a 77 VX2. So it's the Bermuda. And wh what do they call them, uh, Carl? They, they don't call their, their motherboard like others. Planers. They, they are planers. P L A N A R. So we're checking the power supply. On the big connector, we got the plus five, the plus 12. And then we are worried about the power good. And to make it start up, you have to connect pin four. So pin four to pin four, pin whatever, six is ground, the black one. I don't see anything. Oh, 12, okay. 12. And then the third one, the yellow. Power grid. Yeah, then I have it. Then it's okay. I, I'm, pin five is. I pin four. I want to see what it is. Oh, it need to be grounded yeah. for it to start. Okay, so we probably have to do yellow to ground to get it to go. Pin five is minus twelve. Minus twelve. Pin six is ground. Ground. And pin seven is minus five. We are all good with power supplies. Yeah, well, sadly, it's not power on here. Yeah. Okay. So well, why don't we strip it? Try to remove yeah. RAM. Or I do stupid things. Remove one, two. See if it does any better. It should beep at us now. It has no memory, right? It should. I'm not interested. Oh, okay, the oscillators are easy to spot at least. So we can do the seven oscillators afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what? Could be the BIOS went bad. Yeah. And I extracted the BIOS chip on from the machine. Check that it has some good code on it. It's an M27C1001. And the device read, read, okay, it doesn't like the ID, let's do it without the ID, I bet IBM has changed it, 
read. Read it. 39G3300, copyright IBM Corporation, 1891-1992, all right reserved. It has all kind of return without go sub, so some basic in there. Uh, all right, so it read understandable stuff. At the end, it has a date, so 92 chip. So BIOS checks all good. I'll, I'll save it, you never know. And then just for the sake of it, not having any better ideas, we we took the processor off. And guess what we find? This pin doesn't look right, so that would probably prevent it from starting up. I don't even understand how it started in the first place. Okay, we're going to straighten that up. Uh, hopefully it won't, it won't break and let's try it again. So unfortunately I could not save it. I, I, I tried to put solder around it before I straightened it up, but that didn't even work, it just broke. So we need a new 486 DX, I guess? DX2. DX2. The processor is a later version of the 486 introduced in 1992 with extended instructions and running internally at twice the bus clock frequency, hence the DX266 name. So internally it runs at 66 MHz, while externally the bus stays at the regular 33 MHz. Note that although it says Intel on it, this chip is made by IBM under license. Since it's dead anyhow, I might as well look inside. Ooh. I eventually got it. It didn't quite go according to plan, but here's our chip. There we go. Yes, I could not resist to take a peek inside. It's very pretty, actually. So in the meantime, while I was looking at the original broken chip under the microscope, I ordered another one on eBay. Actually, I had to order two because the first one did not quite work either. So, Carl, you, uh, we put the 486 in there. It didn't quite work and I thought cold, it was... Cold as could be. Terrible. Yeah, it was, it was like a fish cold in there. And then uh, you are going to probe it when you discover that. When I looked, I noticed that there were two different pinouts for the 4060X2. There was an IBM version, and I don't know how that relates to the IBM Blue Lightning, which is even a br different branded version of the 4060X2. But clearly there were differences in the pinout, and yours had an IBM logo on it. Um, so it seems suspicious, one of the pins being soft reset. Yeah, that's the, so we were just worried it wouldn't get out of reset. So the, the one I had bought was a Intel Intel DX2. This one is almost an Intel though. So it, it says Intel made by IBM, but that's the exact replica. Of what was already in there. Right, and there's all kind of hints that IBM added pins and removed pins and wired them differently. So not knowing any better. Um, we got the exact same replacement. I'm going to try it. I'm not hoping too much on that one, but at least when we test pins, right, we know yeah. they should be the right ones. And it came, you know, put in that uh, uh, static, you know, generating. static generating foam. So, thank you eBay. I'm surprised IBM didn't add a few di different voltages to the chip just to liven things up. Yes, right. And then we have taken the, the, the computer out of its box so we can probe things. Or
just gives me a real thing, but cold, 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 cold. So not the provenance of the chip and this this one I it can't be a fake. Nobody would go through the extent of faking a Intel made by IBM. You could be surprised what people will fake. <laughs> Yeah, you had your own experiences on that, right? Yeah, the memory oh, okay. chip that I looked inside and it turned out to be a touch tone decoder chip. And and it was what was the what was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be a, a vintage memory chip, and it was actually the touch tone chip from an old telephone. Right. So there's like no way the chip could possibly function at all. Okay. So, so I, I decapped it and I was looking at it. I was very confused about the bizarre layout of this memory chip and as just puzzled and puzzled till I realized that it was not a memory chip at all. It was an entirely different chip. So it likely is not a processor problem either, admitting that we did not get a fake or broken replacement. In hindsight, we checked that the bent pin was a VCC pin, of which there are plenty, so it is probable that even with a bent pin, the original processor would still have been functioning. So that's it for the easy peasy debugging. Looks like we need to call in the cavalry for reinforcement. That would be Eric, or TubeTime as he's known on Twitter, who specializes in PCs and knows quite a bit about the microchannel architecture. So expect heavy artillery debugging in the next episode. See you then!